In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make this dining table scene. The starting point for this tutorial is a point midway through my chair tutorial. You can make the file yourself or download it from my website, a link to which you can find in the description below or by clicking the eye icon. Change the view to the front view. Go into face select mode. Select a face on the right hand side of the table as we look at it. Click to toggle limit selection to visible. Press B for B select and drag out a box and that should select all the faces on the right hand side. Press G to grab, X for the X direction, 4 and enter. Select a face on the left hand side. Because you're not limiting selection to visible, you may select one of the back faces, but that is fine. Press B for B select and drag out a box. Press G to grab, X for the X direction, minus 4 and enter. Go into object mode, click the object properties button, give the model a more meaningful name. With the cursor in the 3D view, press S to scale, 0.166 and enter. Shift and mouse wheel to pan down, mouse wheel to zoom in and use the tip of the blue arrow to move the table up so that the table legs just touch the red x-axis. File, append, go to the folder where you have the chair file, select it, go into the object folder I didn't give the model a meaningful name, select the cube and append. Give the model a meaningful name, make sure it's selected and call it chair. Use the tip of the blue arrow to move the chair up so that its legs are just touching the red X axis. Change the view to the right view and set the Y location of the chair to 2. View, select it, drag on the white diagonal lines to open up a new window, make the new window a UV image editor window, click open, go to the folder where you have your wood texture image file, select it and open, and zoom back with the mouse wheel. I'm going to map the wood texture to the chair and the table, click the modifiers button, both have a subdivision surface modifier that I'm going to apply before doing the UV mapping. Reduce the number of subdivisions to two and click apply. Go into edit mode, press A twice to select all, mesh, UV unwrap, smart UV project, click OK, click the browse image button and select the wood texture. Go back into object mode, Change shading to texture. Change blender render to cycles render. Click the material button. Click use nodes. Click the dot at the end of the color field. Select image texture. Click the browse image button and select the wood texture. Select the table. Click the modifiers button. Reduce the level of subdivision to two and apply. Go into edit mode, press A twice to select all, mesh, UV unwrap, smart UV project, click OK, click the material button, click the browse material button, select the wood material and rename it wood. To get a nice tabletop, select a vertex, press B for B select and drag out a box. Press S to scale, 2.5 and enter. Press G to grab and move the selection over the wood texture. Drag on the white diagonal lines to close the UV image editing window. Go into object mode. Change the view to the top view. In the view menu, view selected. Select the chair, duplicate, Shift D and enter. Click 
tick the object properties and set the Y location of the duplicate to minus 2. Press R to rotate 180 and enter. Duplicate, Shift D and enter. Set the Y location of the duplicate to 0 and the X location to 2.5. Press R to rotate, minus 90 and enter. Shift D and enter. Set the X location to minus 2.5. Press R to rotate, 180 and enter. Next, the cutlery. File append. Go to the folder where you have the spoon file, select the file, go into the object folder, select the spoon and append. Select the spoon, click the material button, click the use nodes button, click the surface and set it to glossy. Set the roughness to 0.1 and name the material metal. Change the view to the right view, press S to scale 0 0.05 and enter. Select the chair and in the outliner window click the eye icon to hide it. Select the spoon and use the tip of the blue arrow to move the spoon up and in the view menu view selected. Use the tip of the blue arrow to fine tune the position of the spoon and press R to rotate. Change the view to the top view. Zoom back with the mouse wheel and use the tip of the red arrow to move the spoon to the left. File, append. Go to the folder where you have the fork file. Select the file Go into the object folder. I didn't rename the model. Select the cube and append. Select the fork. Click the browse material button and select metal. Change the view to the right view. Press S to scale 0 0.06 and enter. Shift and mouse wheel to pan down. Click the object properties button and set the X rotation of the fork to minus 90. Rename it fork. Use the tip of the blue arrow to move it up and in the view menu view selected. Use the tip of the blue arrow to fine tune the position of the fork and press R to rotate. File append Go to the folder where you have the knife file, select the file, go into the object folder, select the knife and append. Zoom back with the mouse wheel. Select the knife and press S to scale, point 0.1 and enter. Press R to rotate, 90 and enter. Use the tip of the blue arrow to move the knife up and in the view menu, view selected. Use the tip of the blue arrow to fine-tune the position of the knife. Click the material button, click the browse material button and set the material to metal. Change the view to the top view. Zoom back with the mouse wheel. Click the object properties button and set the X location of the knife to 0.5. Select the fork and set its X location to minus 0.5 and use the arrow in the Y location to nudge it down a little bit. Select the spoon, set its X location to 0, set its Y location to 0.45 and its Z rotation to 90. Select the fork, hold down shift and select the knife. Still holding down shift, select the spoon last. Click join. Use the tip of the green arrow to move the cutlery down. 
duplicate, shift D and enter, press R to rotate 180 and enter, and use the tip of the green arrow to move the duplicate up. Duplicate, shift D and enter, press R to rotate 90 and enter, and use the tip of the green arrow to move the duplicate down, and the tip of the red arrow to move the duplicate across. Shift, D and Enter, press R to rotate, 180 and Enter, and use the tip of the red arrow to place the duplicate. Next, the wine glass. File Append, go to the folder where you have the goblet file, select it, go into the Object folder, select the goblet and Append. Change the view to the right view. Zoom back with the mouse wheel, press S to scale, point 0 0.04 and enter. Use the tip of the blue arrow to move the glass up. In the view menu, view selected. Use the tip of the blue arrow to fine tune the position of the glass. Make sure the glass is selected, click the material button, click the use nodes button. Change the surface to glass and call the material glass. Change the view to the top view. Zoom back with the mouse wheel. Click the object properties button and set the X location to 1 and the Y location to 0.6. Duplicate, Shift, D and Enter and set the X location of the duplicate to minus 0.8. Duplicate, Shift, D and Enter and remove the minus sign from the X location to make it plus 0.8 and add a minus sign to the Y location to make it minus 0.6. Shift, D and enter and set the X location to minus 1. Change the view from orthographic to perspective. Zoom back with the mouse wheel. Drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view and click the eye icon to unhide the chair. Add mesh plane. Press S to scale 8 and enter and call the plane floor. Click the Material button, click the New Material button, click the Colour, click Hex and set the colour to BB9157. Call the new material Mud and change the shading to Material. Duplicate, Shift, D and Enter, press R to rotate, X for the X axis, 90 and enter. In the object menu, apply rotation. Click the object properties, set the Y location to 8, the Z location to 8, and name the plane wall. Click the material button, click the add new material button, click the color, and set the color to F6, F9, a0. It's a pale yellow, so I'm going to call it yellow. Duplicate, shift D and enter. Press R to rotate, Z for the Z axis, 90 and enter. Click the object properties and in the object menu, apply the rotation. Set the X location to minus 8 and the Y location to 0. Select the other wall, duplicate, shift, D and enter. Set the Y location of the duplicate to minus 8. Press S to scale, 0.5 and enter. And call the plane side light. Click the material button. Click the Add New Material button, call the new material Light, change the surface to Emission, click the Colour and type in all Fs, 
zoom back with the mouse wheel, drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view and pan, shift and mouse wheel. Select the floor and duplicate, shift D and enter. Click the browse material button and select light. Click the object properties and set the Z location to 16. Press S to scale, 0.5 and enter and call the plane top light. Change the view to the camera view. Zoom in with the mouse wheel. Select the camera and press G to grab, Z for the Z direction and Z again and move the camera back. Press G to grab, Y for the Y direction and Y again to move the camera up. Click the render button and if you have a compatible graphics card, change the device to GPU. Scroll down and open up the sampling panel. And I found for good results, I needed a thousand samples per pixel. Scroll up and click render and the Cycles Render generates a 2D image from your 3D model. When the rendering has finished, in the Image menu, Save as Image to save the render as an image file. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial and the finished file for you to download at my website, a link to which you can find in the description below or by clicking the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye.